I will say uh, is named uh, deep dive to post quantum pr uh, transition. It consists of two parts. I will uh, make the first part and then pass the mic to Sahana. First uh, part is dedicated uh, to overall uh, representation of uh, post quantum transition and uh, Fedora basic steps of uh, uh, and Fedora implementation. First, uh, who am I? My name is Dmitry Bilevsky. I work in Red Hat for several years. I maintain OpenSSL and OpenSSH. I also participate in OpenSSL upstream development. And one of my primary tasks uh, in uh, Red Hat now is uh, the post quantum transition. So, let's begin with the question why we have to make post quantum transition. There is a wide consensus that uh, quantum computers, if they ever appear, will break traditional cryptography. Yeah, we are speaking about uh, asymmetric cryptography, uh, we, which is used for digital signature for uh, uh, key establishment. So, uh, nobody knows when quantum computers uh, will be built and if they will uh, be ever built, but uh, there is a uh, series of worldwide efforts to implement uh, quantum resistant algorithms, or the other name is post quantum algorithms. But, uh, of course, uh, every algorithm transition uh, has a lot of challenges. Uh, in case of post quantum transition, the challenges are quite special because, well, we definitely know that if quantum computers emerge, uh, classical algorithms uh, ca can be trusted anymore. But uh, classical algorithms have been studied for, well, 40 plus years, and uh, there are no obvious vulnerabilities in them. And we are not so sure about uh, post quantum algorithms. For example, one of the Algorithms uh, has been studied for uh, several years and uh, was uh, cho chosen uh, to the third round of uh, NIST competition. Uh, was found completely broken, uh, and it was a pity. So, uh, current approach uh, is uh, that uh, we will use so-called uh, hybrid solution. Hybrid solution is uh, quite simple. Uh, we make some calculation using uh, classic cryptography. We make some other calculation using post quantum cryptography. And then we combine results. Again, there are uh, several approaches. Uh, they can be uh, some K concatenation, there may be other combinations of keys. Yeah, there may be independent calculations of keys uh, and signatures, but uh, the goal of the hybrid approach is quite simple. If one of the algorithms of the hybrid pair is broken, uh, but the other is still not, uh, we are more or less on the safe side. Ah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, but again, uh, the, uh, this uh, changes, uh, the, these challenges are not the only one we have uh, uh, because, well, comparing to uh, classic algorithms, post quantum algorithms are big in this or that areas or in all areas. They usually have bigger keys, they usually have bigger signatures, uh, and uh, sometimes very, very long calculations. And uh, when it comes to real world, it uh, causes problems. For example, if we take uh, and compare RSA key uh, of uh, three kilobytes, we see that it has, uh, well, uh, 400, uh, 400 bits uh, for uh, signature and key. And uh, for post-quantum algorithms, uh, we have a uh, three to six ti uh, time longer. So it means uh, plus uh, 20 kilobytes per real world certificate chain if it uses post-quantum algorithms only. And it uh, causes problem in real life. Not all uh, devices are ready for longer uh, handshake. Uh, we uh, have uh, TCP fragmentation. Uh, in uh, play, uh, we get performance problems. Of course, uh, especially at early stages, we will get compatibility problems because uh, not all implementations will be correct, and uh, even worse, not all will have simple uh, will have the same bugs. 
so there will be many uh, incompatibilities. Uh, network specific problems include not only fragmentation, but also, especially for UDP based protocols, uh, post quantum cryptography will be great for organizing amplification attacks. So, uh, network engineers are already expecting some of them. And, for example, for uh, such uh, pr uh, popular but not loved by pe uh, personally by me, uh, protocol as DNSSEC, there is uh, currently no uh, post quantum uh, solution at all. Okay. How will uh, the uh, post quantum algorithms come in practice? We have several standard bodies that are working on it. First, it's uh, NIST, uh, it's an American standard. Uh, in the second part, Sahana will also uh, provide some information about the European efforts in this area. Uh, they have chosen for uh, standardization two uh, digital signature algorithms, MLDSA, uh, derived from the project named Delisium, and uh, SLHDSA, derived from uh, the project named Sphinx. The first will be mostly, we, we currently expect that the first will be used in certificates, so the second will be used uh, in, uh, well, uh, firmware signature, software signature, and so on and so forth. The, it's quite bad for uh, re real-time operation TLS style protocols. And uh, also NIST has standardized uh, an algorithm for case establishment. Original project was named Kyber. Uh, the uh, upcoming standard is named MLCAM. Well, after the algorithms are finally standardized, it's a turn of the organization named ATF uh, to properly build the, the algorithms into the protocol standards uh, at all. Uh, there is a ATF working group named uh, PKIP. Uh, which uh, leads uh, this uh, process, but of course, any specialized working groups also are involved and uh, dealing with uh, the standards which is uh, in their zone of responsibility. And last but not least, uh, we will have uh, to implement these algorithms in hardware. I will uh, briefly explain why. And uh, here comes uh, the OASIS group that is working on PKS11 standard. All modern real-time uh, protocols uh, have uh, two parts uh, that are using asymmetric algorithms that are subject to be uh, broken. Yeah, uh, the digital signature algorithm, they say, uh, which uh, ensure that we have connected with a proper peer, that uh, we go got a signed email uh, signed by a person we expected uh, from, that the, the firmware is really expected uh, by a company, uh, by, by the vendor of your desktop and no, not by malware ink and so on and so forth. And uh, the second uh, part of the real-time protocols is uh, key establishment mechanisms, which uh, is used for providing symmetric, uh, symmetric keys uh, because asymmetric operations are much, much slower. So the uh, key established mechanism gives us a way to secure, establish a symmetric key and then use uh, symmetric, en symmetric encryption, which uh, is safe uh, from the post-quantum perspective. So these parts are, have different uh, treat models and different uh, requirements and different workarounds. The, uh, the case of digital signature is, uh, uh, the, uh, is here on the slide, yeah? Well, first uh, st step of the treat, yeah, we use some magic. So, sorry, I wanted to say uh, we use quantum computer. Uh, then we uh, make uh, c calculation, uh, we restore uh, private key from public, which is impossible without that magic. And then uh, you can uh, uh, mount a real-time attack, uh, man in the middle, impersonate well-known site, and uh, then uh, steal all the secrets you want. Countermeasures for uh, this street model are quite difficult because, well, you have to 
implement new trust routes and uh, distribute it among all the software. New trust routes implies uh, that uh, this uh, has to be implemented in certificate authorities. Certificate authorities uh, need hardware implementation. It's a requirement of uh, say browser forum. And th that's uh, where hardware uh, comes into play. Yeah, the hardware implementations are wonderful from that point of view that uh, it's impossible to, uh, to organize a leak of the private key. So it provides an extra level of security. And, and well, after you have uh, trusted routes, after you have all this har hardware implemented, yeah, you will have to replace all the certificates. And, uh, all, uh, and of course you will have to replace uh, the software uh, to, to be suitable to operate with uh, these uh, new algorithms, but uh, it's inevitable anyway. For key establishment mechanism, uh, the threat model is quite different. We can start collecting, uh, well, not we, ho hope, hopefully not we. Uh, malicious actors uh, can start collecting uh, data now, then uh, use uh, another kind of magic, uh, restore the symmetric keys from, well, usually a difficult one style scheme, and then extract the secrets from uh, the pre-recorded communication. Countermeasures in this case are sort of more simple. Uh, they uh, require only uh, replacement of software, but we uh, still hope that uh, software is uh, regularly upgraded. Okay, so now let's turn from theory uh, to less uh, theoretic parts. What is uh, the scope of post-quantum transition uh, when we are speaking about operation system, about, about Fedora, about RHEL? So, uh, uh, on this slide you see how the uh, architecture is organized. There are crypto algorithms, they implemented either inside uh, or uh, as a plugins uh, in several uh, crypto libraries. Oh, in case of uh, RHEL and Fedora, there are only three major libraries, OpenSSL, NSS and GNU-TLS. And we try to limit uh, the amount of uh, these implementations for many uh, reasons. Then in uh, Fedora and RL, uh, we have a great tool named CryptoPolices, uh, thanks Tomasz, uh, who specify uh, which algorithms we consider secure, which algorithms can uh, be used consistently on a system-wide level. But Again, here we end the scope of OS level transition. Then we have applications that rely on uh, the uh, crypto libraries and uh, they will require extra efforts. Sometimes are uh, already uh, uh, agile enough to deal with almost any algorithm, uh, no, ma no matter which. Uh, so, uh, but some of them, still, uh, I'm sure, pretty sure, uh, still have uh, limitations that, well, RSA and the elliptic curves and nothing more. So application transition is out of OS level uh, post-quantum transition scope. Now, Fedora is completely ready for post-quantum, at least for experiments. We have chosen uh, the LibOS uh, by Open Quantum Safe project. It provides implementation of uh, uh, pre standard versions of the algorithms and also they provide, open, uh, they ha have uh, implemented OpenSSL provider, a plugin for OpenSSL. You can uh, configure it and uh, post quantum algorithms become available in OpenSSL. Sahana will, uh, will uh, show in her part how it works. Uh, so, these versions are already av available since Fedora 39, so it's the oldest version that is currently supported, so Fedora is currently completely ready for the experiments. And uh, since Fedora 40, we have implemented a crypto policy that provides, as I mentioned before, consistent configuration for post-quantum experiments. 
we uh, also have uh, chosen the algorithms uh, to be provided by the operation system we maintain. Uh, of course, we have chosen NIST standards, well, pre -stand technically press standards, so they will be updated when the standards are finalized. Plus, in Fedora, we also add uh, kyber based uh, hybrid algorithms because they are uh, widely di distributed. They are available, well, for example, in Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. Uh, there are installations on Cloudflare, so you can make post-quantum experiments. And, of course, we run uh, the interoperability tests against uh, all these implementations, and, well, our implementation works. But we still expect uh, uh, incompatibilities at this or the, that stage. We don't know how long uh, the Kyber-based algorithms will be provided in our distributions. It depends on uh, how long it remains popular. As it's pre-standard, pre uh, we expect that uh, they will disappear relatively soon after the standards uh, happen to be finalized. And uh, some special case, OpenSSH implements their own uh, post-quantum algorithms, and in TRU there, is, uh, there are no uh, standard, uh, some, uh, well, no ITF level standard, and uh, there will be no NIST level standard, I expect. It's implemented outside of the major crypto libraries, but we also expect that uh, there will be some specification based on uh, NIST chosen algorithms. But, again, uh, making uh, operation system a uh, post-quantum ready is an ongoing process. Again, uh, Sahana has implemented a container she will uh, use in her demo, uh, so you don't have to do it yourself. In previous version of presentation, I explained that which steps sh uh, should be done uh, manually, now you should not. We try to uh, put the most recent versions of uh, OpenSSL uh, of the OS of OKS provider to Fedora Rawhide uh, to make them up to date. And, uh, of course, we continue working with upstreams, uh, with OpenSSL, with NSS, with GNU-TLS uh, to make them uh, completely post-quantum ready. So, last slide of my presentation, what you can do for uh, post-quantum transition. Yeah, it's uh, quite obvious. You can uh, choose, uh, you can identify the hard code limitations in your, applica in, uh, your applications and replace uh, this limitation with a more generic API. You can use, uh, re uh, you, you can raise the issue upstream, uh, it's a preferable way. Well, preferable way is not raised, by, but also fix. Uh, and uh, for those cases uh, where there is lack of uh, specification in the protocol level, you should participate in the protocol uh, development work. Uh, please uh, join the ATF process, it's quite simple. Though uh, quite frustrating. Sometimes. Okay, uh, uh, so my part is over. If you have uh, several questions now, you can uh, ask them, uh, and then I will pass the microphone to Sahana. Will the uh, hybrid versions be standardized, and uh, or, or we just get purpose quantum? I expect that uh, at current uh, uh, approaches, we will have a hybrid version standardized, and the pure post quantum uh, transition will happen only when we are uh, sure enough that uh, post quantum can be broken immediately. So, but uh, I would say that uh, upcoming, uh, well, five to ten years, we will have uh, hybrid uh, solutions widely distributed. Plus X two five five one nine or 
combined can do a standard that would be done, for example, by ISDN. I don't expect MIG to standardize the hybrid combination, but that doesn't mean that we will not get it. It will still be combined and meant to take it where it needs to be. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So relying on the, on the post quantum. Yes, we don't expect NIST standardizing the post quantum. Uh, 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 the, the hybrid combination, yeah, though it's wonderful how it will be from a uh, certification point of view, of course. It will be a separate fancy game. Uh, thanks, Tomasz, for your hint. Dima? Uh, does it mean that different libraries will uh, use different uh, approaches and uh, it will cause uh, to incompatibility? No, incompatibilities will be co caused despite uh, they you use the same solution. Yes, we expect that it will provide the same standards, but uh, we still expect incompatibilities. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm passing the mic to Sahana. It's okay, I'm audible. All right, um, so let's continue with my part now. Um, I'll be introducing all of you to the European project, uh, QBIP, and some other European efforts towards the post-quantum migration. Um, so whoever gets the name of the tram station right in a few seconds would get a coffee from me except Clemens, because he took the picture. Is there somebody else? <laughs> Qu question for the locals here. Yeah. Yeah, but he was faster, and yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll meet for a coffee later. All right, so I'm Sahana Prasad. I work at Red Hat. I finished about five years um, in September this year. Uh, I help co-maintain OpenSSL and LibSSH for Fedora, CentOS, and um, RHEL. Uh, right now, I'm involved as a Red Hat partner um, for the Qubit um, post-quantum transition from Red Hat. Okay, so um, I'll consider the example of Germany uh, when it comes to what the European countries are thinking about. So BSI is the uh, Federation for Information Security in Germany. So uh, it's sort of thinking that it needs at least 15 years to migrate their current public key infrastructure system into the post-quantum world because their existing root certificates are valid for about 10 years from now. And the next production-ready post-quantum route would be available in um, 2027. Uh, looking at what French, uh, France would do, so um, ANSSI, ANSSI here is the uh, cybersecurity agency of France. So it's going to take over the migration um, aspects. And it's definitely not a fan of di directly replacing the traditional cryptographic algorithms and putting the post-quantum replacements. But um, it has a three-phase plan for a smoother migration into the post-quantum world. And the plan is sort of tentatively looking like this. Um, in the first phase, there would still be some pre-quantum um, security. Post-quantum comp um, computations would only be optional. But of course, in this phase, as you may see, the quantum resistance um, is not guaranteed. That means these systems would still uh, be attacked. And the timeline for um, a system like this would be in 2025. In the second phase, um, the algorithms would be slightly improved. There's a bit more quantum resistance uh, that could be promised. And this extends to about 2030. And beyond 2030, all the systems have to migrate into a standalone post-quantum world um, with the assurance of uh, quantum resistance. Uh, so that was about some of the countries in Europe. And what's uh, the global um, world looking like when it comes to post-quantum crypto? So there has been a new alliance formed. It's called the Post-Quantum Cryptography Alliance. And this alliance is funded by the Linux Foundation. And uh, it has some esteemed uh, premier members 
of this group like Amazon and Google, IBM, NVIDIA, and, and so on. Um, so what is this uh, foundation doing and what are the uh, projects involved in the post-quantum cryptography alliance? The first one is Open Quantum Safe that we saw previously. Uh, so Open Quantum Safe project basically in implements two things. The first one is LibOQS. This is like an extensive library of all the post-quantum crypto algorithms. This could also be pre-standard. And then there is the OQS provider. And this is a provider that's tailored only to integrate with OpenSSL. So if you want to use any post-quantum algorithms in OpenSSL, then you need to have this OQS provider in place. Uh, and as part of this foundation, PQ code package um, is a part of it, and it builds high assurance implementations of crypto. The difference is that it follows the standard track and it only implements those. Uh, so in the first phase, it's experimenting with ML chem, and in the subsequent phases, it'll add more algorithms, ML DSA and SLH DSA. So this was basically formed so that you can prepare for NSA's uh, cybersecurity guidelines for all of these companies to sort of abide by and yeah. All right, so um, CNSA is a guide that says what algorithm suits should be used by the American um, agency. So if you look at this timeline on the left hand, you'll see what are the systems that need post-quantum uh, transition software systems, web browsers, traditional equipments, operation system, and other e equipments. And you'll see um, a dashed line and a solid line. A dashed line is uh, an opt-in sort of uh, post-quantum stuff, and a solid line is only mandatorily post-quantum, and it will abide by the default and preferred standards from CNSA algorithm suits. And the timeline is sort of looking like this. At 2030, uh, most of the software and um, traditional networking e equipment would be migrated, and by 2023, we'll even probably have web browsers that are fully post-quantum capable. So that was just a brief overview of the other projects that are going around, and the project that we are working on is called Qubip. Just a formal definition of how it was derived, it's quantum-oriented update to browsers and infrastructure for the post-quantum transition. So this project, uh, funded by the European Union, is basically leading the integration of post-quantum algorithms. Integration stressed here because it's not implementing any of the algorithms. We're only going to use algorithm implementations from other places. But we've thought of use cases to integrate this in all of our protocols, in networks, and in systems. And the project timeline for this project is about roughly three years. We started it last year. We're in the second year, and our deliverables are due uh, end of next year. OK, so who are the partners? Um, so we have a mix of both industry and academia in this um, project. So it's looking solid in different, uh, different aspects. And um, yes, Red Hat is, of course, a partner to this. And we work very closely with uh, one other partner, Tampere University. Uh, and Lynx um, is taking over the coordination for the whole project. Um, so what are the goals and strategic objectives of the Qubit project itself? It's tenfold. Um, I have to go through them. And the first one is uh, evaluation of quantum computers itself. So what are the what could be the capabilities and what are the challenges that could come in when you have to port the algorithms in it? So that's the first one. Secondly, we'll talk about um, the information IoT uh, devices. How would they transition? So would there be different hardware requirements uh, for these use cases? And the third um, objective is, how is the software being changed? So uh, what would OpenSSL and NSS need? So here comes the uh, concept of a loadable module. So this is a new introduction that we'll speak about in the subsequent slides. Uh, and Red Hat is um, uh, contributing to this part and cooperating with other partners. Um, and then we have the transition of Fedora OS. So how are these software modules going into the OS and integrate, getting integrated well to uh, provide post-quantum hybrid TLS version 1.3? Red Hat is also a part of this, and this is what we're mostly leading, Bima and I, uh, from our team. And then uh, using all of these um, tools, we will actually run an experiment uh, to see how Firefox browser does by adopting these um, PQ hybrid algorithms. And Red Hat will also be a part of this. The second set of goals mostly revolve around um, hardening the security for IPsec. Maybe it needs a bit of um, key exchange uh, changes uh, to abide by. And finally, looking at all of the, uh, taking all these six objectives into consideration and choosing real world problems, okay, and transitioning them. 
and validating these three systems. So I'll talk about uh, what these three systems are. Basically, it's IoT, Internet of Internet Browsing, and Telco. So these three systems are chosen, and Red Hat will obviously also be a part of this um, um, objective. And then we have um, maximization of return on experience, so evaluating how the technical, economical, and legal barriers work for this experience, and to maximize industrial impact. So this basically means that as a partner, we also contribute um, to the standards or upstream, we follow the upstream work um, that's happening in this post-quantum field. And Red Hat is part of this um, objective as well. All right, so basically the big deliverables of the Qubit project are threefold. First one is in the IoT field, second in the internet browsing field, and third is for 5G networks and beyond in telco. So Red Hat is only focused on the second pilot demonstrator, which is internet browsing. So from now on, on all the slides, we'll only speak about um, this part and what's relevant to internet browsing. Okay, so I briefly mentioned loadable modules earlier. So for this pilot, uh, Tampere University has come up with the concept that uh, we would need something called loadable modules. We'll briefly speak about why. So um, we know that we can harvest now and decrypt later. This basically means that you collect all the information, like we said, and you're able to decrypt at a later point when you have the private key. So this is something we don't want a quantum computer to do that we're all very well aware of, and this is the hardware limitation. But beyond this, there are other challenges we could face as well. As humans, we might implement algorithms incorrectly, or there could be a problem in deploying the post-quantum algorithm. There could be a delay in adoption of the post-quantum algorithm itself. So these are the other difficulties that we should also address. And to address these difficulties, I think um, there, would, there were software changes required. Um, so great effort uh, done by OpenSS little team here um, when they came up with the concept of providers. So what providers did was it opened up um, OpenSSL to actually interact with other third-party software, which could have their own implementations of algorithms. Um, and because of this option in OpenSSL, OQS provider um, could easily very well integrate with OpenSSL, and now um, we're able to use the algorithms. Uh, although this was possible, there is um, lack of crypto agility in this, because if you want to change any algorithm, you still have to change the provider code. You still have to change OpenSSL provider. And this is something that we don't want, probably. So the new concept is to develop something called a shallow module. And with this shallow module, there would be a new uh, Qubip OpenSSL provider. So this will only act as a layer between OpenSSL and other third parties. So you don't have to change anything in the provider. The provider can then talk to many different uh, newer projects that come up as the standards are changing, and they can talk to the newer algorithms that are going to be in place without actually recompiling OpenSSL itself. So I think this is going to be a big win. Um, so this is how diagrammatically it's looking like. Um, this is the protocol layer. And from the core, we call different providers, default FIPS legacy provider as of now. And the QoS provider integrates like this into the third party provider list. And the new Qubit provider, this is being led by Tampere University, would fall into this place. Okay. So coming back a little bit to um, what Red Hat practical responsibilities are for the project, the deliverable itself is to integrate PQ algorithms in Fedora OS. So these are the four components, uh, OpenSSL, OQS provider, LibOQS, and crypto policies, as mentioned before. So we have to maintain these packages, fix any CVEs if applicable, backport fixes to older releases of Fedora, follow upstream changes actively if there were any changes, and uh, make new rebases, collaborate with Tampere University and Mozilla, um, and use this Qubit provider and be a part of running the Firefox experiments. And uh, yeah, of course, we are part of meetings and other things. And another deliverable, importantly, was to come up with a container that's um, very minimal and to be it, it should be usable by um, everybody. And we chose Fedora for this um, as a pilot. And this would be Red Hat's deliverable, the container. So let's um, get into this aspect now of um, what we do in the container and how we built it. So crypto policies, like we spoke before, is a governor of what kind of algorithms you need to choose. And now with post-quantum, we've come up with a sub-policy, and this sub-policy is called test PQ. So this test PQ sub-policy has to be enabled if you want to use um, post-quantum algorithm. So here's the command, update crypto, poli uh, update crypto policy show, and you will enable this uh, policy. And if you check the groups, then um, Kyber should be in the forefront, and this should take priority over the other regular algorithms that were used by default previously. 
Uh, now to interoperate with the external server, Open Quantum Safe has an implementation that you can test your implementation with uh, using these commands that we'll see in the demo. So if you connect on 6040, you'll be using Kyber Group and 6041 as well, um, so on, to run the interoperability tests. Um, so in the demo that I would show, in the logs, you'll see this value 25497. So please in your my head uh, correspond this to the uh, Kyber. It's still being shown as unknown. This is an INA value uh, associated for uh, Kyber uh, because we still don't have uh, an OpenSSL fix, which is an upstream, not yet ported um, downstream. So if you look at 25497, that this means Kyber for us. All right, so how to actually use this uh, post-quantum capable container? Um, you'll have to first ensure that on your system you have Podman and Docker installed. And once you do that, uh, visit this link and just pull this latest tag. So just running this command on your um, systems. And we should now then move on to our demo. So um, yeah, moving to this website, checking what the latest tag is, and just copying this and uh, pulling this up on your system. I've done this previously. And now um, we have to execute this. We have to run this uh, container. So run this exact tag. And now if you see, we're already in this container. And we'll just check the version of Fedora. So this container is built for um, 40. Rawhide will follow. And the OpenSSL version is 0 0.2.1 on this container. And it's just list of providers. And you should see that uh, OK provider is activated here by default. Uh, I mean, is activated. Um, on this container. And if we see the policies, we are checking if the test equals the policy is set, and it is set. Let's quickly go to the file to see um, if the groups of Kyber are activated as well. So this should be in the current policy, current state. And if you see under groups, so this is activated as well. And Um, just showing that I've set up some keys beforehand on this container, uh, some root keys that would be required if you want to continue testing. So this script will just tell you uh, how the keys are generated and what configuration changes you need if you want to interop with Nginx. And those are the commands that could be used. You can have a look at it later. And we will go look at the Nginx configuration file and see if it's ready to do TLS connections. So here, if you see, I've disabled the uh, settings for server, so on 4.4.3, Nginx server should be able to run. And in this file, um, there are commands, how to you know, run the test with OpenSSL client server, Nginx curl, and the test server we spoke about, which is from quantum, Open Quantum Safe. For today's demo purpose, I've only chosen to show you a demo with the connection of Open Quantum Safe, but you can experiment with other stuff later, so let's see if we can connect through post-quantum algorithms. Looks like the connection went through. And let's see if the key share and groups were also correct. So if you see now, it's unknown. So this was the value that I showed you before for Kaiba. So this is unknown as well in groups. And the connection, the TLS connection went through. So yeah, there you go. This was a small demo of the first connection to the Open Quantum Safe um, server from Red Hat's effort. So thank you, and this ends my part. And if there are any questions, we're happy to ask. Just a side comment. Uh, if you pay attention, yeah, you. Uh, just a small comment, yeah, uh, it's, uh, we, we will explain it uh, in the next version of the demo that you have seen a really, really large CK exchange message that was uh, more than uh, one kilobyte. It means that uh, we use post-quantum algorithms. Uh, it's another, another check. Yeah, for example, when you use uh, classical algorithms, uh, there are only 32 bytes of uh, the AK exchange message. So please, please. Uh,
uh, you, you ask uh, that the quantum uh, algorithms will, will not be certified by NIST, yeah? Uh, I'm sorry, it looks like uh, a sort of misunderstanding for me, because uh, we explicitly mentioned that uh, the quantum algorithms are uh, uh, are in under the certification uh, by, by uh, yes, they uh, well, we can't predict how it will work for hybrid so, uh, for hybrid solution from the fifth certification, yeah. I uh, personally, I expect uh, that there will be uh, some uh, weird stuff there. Yeah. Well, fifth uh, certification is always sort of weird stuff, and we will need some quirks. But uh, well, there, uh, I don't expect uh, the end users uh, will need those problems. The developers will. I'm sorry, Tomas, may I ask you to go here and take the mic? <laughs> it, uh, I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, let me introduce Tomas Mraz, uh, is a former Red Hatter. Now he is one of the leading developers of the OpenSL uh, project. Uh, so uh, he, and of course, uh, as a FIPS certification is one of the goals of uh, FIPS, uh, uh, sorry, of OpenSL project, he uh, is aware, uh, he is capable to answer some certification questions. Uh, so um, I just wanted to say that uh, basically the uh, FIPS validation does not care about like combinations of crypto algorithms. So if, if both algorithms are um, uh, certified or validated by, by FIPS, uh, standardized by FIPS, by NIST, uh, that it should be like fine to basically use is use this combination as the hybrid algorithm. Yeah. So if ML chem is standardized uh, and ECDH is used on, on it for the key establishment, then it will it, it, it should be no problem. Like just just because especially for the key uh, establishment, it's not uh, like like completely magic formula, you basically combine those, uh, those two keys that you get uh, by some simple XOR operation or something. Signatures are a little bit more complex and more, more, more difficult, the hybrid signatures, but Uh, is it also uh, opinion of the lab? Uh, we did not ask uh, this uh, question to lab yet, but of course we will uh, ask the, uh, this question of the fifth certification uh, to the fifth certification lab because uh, it's uh, the instance we have to ask this question. Like everything with FIPS is like, uh, uh, yeah, there is some magic, there is some muddy waters, some, some, some. Uh, yeah, you are in, on your own, what you do, and uh, yeah, basically nothing is like completely FIPS compliant, like 100% as all the NIST engineers would agree, or all the labs would agree, and so on. So, so FIPS is magic, and dark magic, I would say. <laughs> Any more questions, please? One? Two, three, thank you. You will be able to find us. Uh, so feel free to ask questions in person if you don't want to ask them now. Thank you very much. <laughs>